Good evening. It is Wednesday. It's eight o'clock. And so it's time for Jaw Jaw on Raw Raw, where we uh, we enthusiasts of raw food all get together to talk about our favorite topic, our dogs, uh, food, health, and how to bring all those three things together. It's, we're indulging ourselves, but I'm, I'm, you know, why not? Why not? We're all in lockdown now. And so to come together and, and have a bright evening of talking about our dogs and our food, I think is it's, it's a good excuse. I love it. This evening, I'm really, really pleased to, to introduce a man I've just uh, got to know a wee bit. Um, and hopefully by the end of our half hour now, we're going to know him a wee bit more. He's a very interesting character. Uh, I'm really, really impressed with with his level of knowledge and with his with with the amount of study that he's done. He puts me to shame. Uh, he's really passionate about his dogs. <laughs> Here he is. I've got him there. Uh, he's really passionate about his dogs. He's really passionate about raw food. And um, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jason Allen. Jace, how are you this evening? Hello. Not too bad. Not too bad. You're well. Yeah, very well. Looking forward to it. Excellent. How's Forrest this evening? Yeah, he's brilliant. Is he brilliant. good? Is he there? Can we say hi? He's in the living room at the moment. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Don't disturb me now. I'm working. He's soaking, he's soaking wet anyway, so he's probably better <laughs> off where he is. Fantastic. Good. You had a good day? Yeah, long day, long day. Yeah. Okay. But all, all good otherwise. Yeah, very well, mate. Very Excellent. well. Excellent. So, um, Let's have a look. What I would love to go through, um, and tell me if there's anything you want to add, would be I'd love to go through your journey from yeah. what you used to think about raw food to what you think about now, and how and, and what changed your mind there, and what you're doing now, and and how you do that. But also, I'd love to talk to you about your qualifications because you've actually gone out and got some qualifications in nutrition. So I'd like yeah. to really qu uh, uh, pick your brains because people ask me about that a lot, and I'm sure our uh, our, our audience would would be really interested to to hear because I, I reckon twice a week people ask me how do I learn more about nutrition. I love it and I want to learn more. So uh, we we'd, we'd love to pick your brains on that one, and then. We're just going to indulge ourselves and talk about if you if if you don't mind, you said you'd love to talk about energy systems and how to feed the working dog and, and have some logic as to why we might choose certain types of feeding for certain work with our dogs and how that differs from feeding the average uh, pooch who uh, just decorates the uh, the rug in front of the fire. Yeah, yeah. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that. So, fantastic. So, just to kick off, then, tell us, uh, tell us about how, when did you first hear about raw food, and what was your first impression? Probably about what three and a year, three and a half years ago now. All right. First dog, me and Becky, obviously the missus. Yeah. Um, Bought our first dog. Yeah. Um, and I think, as you know, I've never even heard a rule at this point. And sorry, that's our fault. Yeah. <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't shouting loud enough. We weren't shouting so, enough. We've obviously, you know, obviously buy your first dog, and your first thing is you go to a, you know, the pet shop that everybody knows. You know, you buy you buy the most expensive bag of kibble you can buy. You, you want to keep up all the vaccinations. You want to buy the most expensive bed you could think of. So, yeah, obviously, you know, we bought this dog home. Yeah. And um, uh, straight away, you know, we, we put the food down for him, the kibble. He wouldn't touch it, wouldn't touch it at all. And this went on for months. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking now. Ah. Um, so it was literally about, about three weeks later, it was still coming on with, with the kibble that we were given by the breeder. Yeah. Um, and this went off for months, like literally two months later, we went we went back to, to the pet store. We bought a higher quality brand of kibble. Um, it was exactly the same thing. It was probably twice as much money, higher in protein, all that garbage that they try and sell you. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, we put that down. It was exactly the same. We sniff it, you look at you and think, well, what are you feeding me that for? Okay. Um, and then 
Uh, yeah, I obviously went. I went to work the next day, and I, I said to a lad who, who's breeder cocker spaniels, does a lot of jelly stuff as well. I said, "You know, what, what do you feed your dog? I can't get in a week nothing." And he said, "If I was you, he said I'd go raw." And I looked at him. I said, "What do you mean by that?" And then <laughs> he, he turned around and he said, "Well, it's like raw food, Jace. It's what they eat in the world. It's what they're designed to eat." I thought, "All right, okay." So uh, I said, well, "Where would you get it from?" He said, "Well, I'll, I'll, I'll text my missus." And then, you know, uh, she'll give you a load of pointers, where to go, you know, what to get. And then come up then with the 80 10, 10. So we went, uh, went up to the pet shop again, yeah. bought a load of 80, 80 10, 10, bought a new freezer, bought two weeks worth of food. Wow. I just thought it was a gimmick. Absolute gimmick. I thought, no, you know, he's not going to eat this. He's, you know, he's not going to, you know, dogs don't need to eat this anymore. But anyway, next day we woke up, open, open this 80 10, 10, put the food down. He totally devoured this food. Absolutely annihilated. I was absolutely fascinated by how, how fast he ate it. Um, yeah. And he come up, he was like, you know, is there any more? Be like, lick going back to his bowl, licking his bowl. He put more down. I was absolutely fascinated by it. Um, so, yeah, we've we, we done that then for probably about two months. What did you start with? Protein. protein. What did you start with? Uh, we started with chicken. Yeah. I, I don't really advise people to start with chicken now um we all know that it's like a main source it's, it's, it's a main allergy um he was absolutely fine on it okay uh, the reason why i say don't start on chicken is because obviously you know if you are new to raw like i was you start on chicken you end up getting an allergy problem um you're gonna have a bad experience and yes. then that's gonna put you off and then you're gonna go back to kibble yeah. so I, I always say something like you know turkey or rabbit you know something you know white yeah yeah. white meat blended yeah yeah so obviously then yeah we obviously got myself on instagram one day i was so fascinated with raw food i didn't even know anything about diy either didn't even know that existed yeah. and i typed in uh raw dog food in the search and it just come up with all these amazing little pretty pretty perfect bowls as, as you might see on my my account and i was just completely hooked and fascinated by it i was just like you know i want to know why that's in the bowl okay this is in the bowl. Yeah. i want to learn you know everything so yeah i went down that route so what, did you do? so so what was the what was the first book you bought first book was fish Carry nutrition by lou olson yes yeah decent book um and that book actually put me off kibble completely changed the way i looked at dry foods yeah. you know the way that is it's made and rendered by horrible nasty out of date meats and you know fake minerals and vitamins it's not dog food is it you know it's, it's, it's not there for health you know yeah it's dog food but it's not food is what exactly. I, I normally say you know it's yeah. i mean because for for me when you say dog food the subtext is it's garbage and you've got to get mm. rid of it somewhere so you might as well stick it in a dog because the subtext is dogs don't really matter therefore you can feed them ultra processed food that you wouldn't mm. feed to your family you know there are not many yeah. people not many intelligent people who would voluntarily feed their, their their family for months and years on end ultra processed food to the exclusion of all else mm. you know what i mean yeah okay. yeah so you got you 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 you, you read lou olson and you, you you you're getting more interested where did you go from there in your thinking and in your uh, reading yeah, I just kept on reading. Obviously, I was still feeding the 8, 10, 10 at the time, but then I just started learning more about, you know, the minerals and the vitamins and each individual organs and all that type of thing. Yeah. And then I you know, had a proper crack then at, you know, DIY. It took me about three days to prep 20 mils. Yeah. It takes about two hours now. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I was approached one day by somebody who said, oh, do you mind coming down to our pet shop doing a, doing a workshop slash seminar? And I was really sort of like, well, what's going on here now? <laughs> um, I, 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 I turned them down. I turned them down because um, I, you know, I felt I, I lacked the knowledge. I didn't have the qualifications. I just think it'd be really unprofessional to take it. And I got asked again, and I turned that down as well. And I thought, you know, I might, I might. You, you, know, you must have been call. talking to a lot of people, and 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 really kind of uh, uh, talking a lot about raw, about and and saying uh, about how the dog dog dogs looked at that stage uh yeah there must have been a reason that they came to you because if you were just sitting at home feeding your dogs they'd not know about what you're doing how did they know that you were getting more and more keen with raw that was all through instagram obviously uh -huh. i started having to go go at doing my own 
you know, bowls, bowls right. of food. It sort of come from Maryland. Right. And I used to obviously blog about, obviously, our first dog, Bear, he used to have like a horrible sort of rough patch on his back. Yeah. And then as soon as I used to document that as well, used to document all the stalls, you know, you get this horrible sort of runny kibble stall. And then, you know, you have a really solid firm stall after that. So it was all about boost, sort of boosting all that. And then, yeah, obviously, you know, people mess, mess with me from there. Okay. And then obviously, yeah, I got myself into um, got myself into a course online. Okay, tell us about your course. That's really, really good. So, so uh, the rest is history as regards you. Yeah, you're now. Uh, tell us how we can reach you on Instagram. Uh, you, I got workshop rule. Workshop rule. Um, and then I've also got uh, Jason Allen working spaniels, which is all about you know gun dog nutrition. Uh huh. Um. You know, the welfare of a, the dog, I suppose. You know, the whole world warm up and yeah. releasing uh, joint fluid, synovial fluid yeah. in the joint. Um, yeah, there's all, all sorts of information on there. Working. Uh, so we all know about uh, Workshop Raw, but Jake yeah. and Alan working Spaniels, uh, working Spaniels, it'll it, this will just wrap around in a second, just so that everybody knows. Uh, here we go, quite slow. Yeah, Jason Allen, working spaniels. That's it. Okay, yeah. good, great. So we, we can meet you there on Instagram. That's fabulous, brilliant. Um, uh, okay, so we've we've got that. You, so you're 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 now doing you're doing two Instagrams. You're are you doing any talks, any workshops nowadays? Now that you're you're now that your Instagram is called Workshop Raw. Not at the moment, obviously, because of COVID. Okay. Um, I, I was due to do one last March in Aberdeen. Obviously, I live in Bristol, so it's quite far away. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, I'd cancel that one, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but I am getting into Zoom. Now, I'm going to be doing a few talks on Zoom. Great. Um, doing a few on there, just, you know, basically teaching of, you know, DIY, you know, talking about the 80, 10, 10, what you can add to make them more of a complete complete meal. Obviously, you know, they are missing things like iodine and vitamin D and things like that. Mm. So, yeah, going through there. Um, obviously, the club I do it for are actually, um, you know, working working dogs as well, uh, the Griffins. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of them as well doing, like, um, agility, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, obviously, you know, going down the old energy route and how, how do you feel the walk, working dog from there. Fabulous. Really, really good. So uh, Lisa Jane Mappin has just said, can you tell us a bit more about the course that you did? Yeah, so that was with um, British College of Canine Studies. I think it's about 14 units that you do, and it's all sort of individual stuff. Yeah. You do all about um, health of the dog. You do about the old um, anatomy of the dog. You do about herbs, dry foods. Uh, you do a lot of raw feeding. The yeah. raw feeding unit was pretty big. Um, is that right? British College of that's, one, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's really good. Great. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, I interrupted you there. Um, but yeah, it was actually a level level three diploma in canine health and nutrition. But there's all sorts in there. It's a really good course to get into. Obviously, what I always say to people though is, it's not what you sort of learn during the course. It's, it's the amount of learning that you do afterwards. Yeah. Obviously, you, you never stop learning. Yeah. Um, it's a springboard, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can finish that course and you you might have the same knowledge what you did when you started obviously you know if you are like new to raw food like i was obviously you're gonna have a, a lot of knowledge afterwards but obviously mm. you know, i feel i completed that about two years ago now and obviously i've all been doing since then is reading books looking on the internet for you know different um studies on raw feeding um i've been following different nutritionists such as yourself nick um all people around america and obviously now i'm quite good friends with them now great Fabulous. Fabulous. It's it's quite it's when there isn't kind of uh, it, 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 the people's front of Judea versus the Judean people's front. When there isn't that, oh, do you feed veg? No, I don't. I'm not going to talk to you. That kind of nonsense, which I which I, I disagree with. Uh, I think it's a really good network. It's a really good family. I, f I find um, I in me I'm able to immediately bond with raw feeders because you've got such a strong uh, strong strong uh, uh, your journeys overlap uh, and, yeah. and, and mimic each other so much. 
and 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 also you're kind of on the outside yeah most people are still feeding kibble and and still mm-hmm. you know going down that 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 hills royal canon uh, purina line of things and so you know if you're 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 outsiders together which is kind of nice you know and i i honestly think we are doing more good for more dogs uh as a percentage of those who are feeding raw than yeah. the the kibble the uh, any kibble not putting not putting any fingers at any 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 one kibble manufacturer i really do think we we are uh well the dogs are doing it for themselves because they extract it from the feed that we feed but we are giving them some great food in, on which to thrive so yeah we can we can pat ourselves on the back for that okay that that's that's really good okay so you you did your you did your course there and you found it useful because it it kind of it gave you it gave you somewhere to go from it gave you a baseline and and yeah uh, yeah okay cool what's your favorite book of the moment would you say i've just bought yeah small animal clinic nutrition uh the fourth edition um i I mean, I've been reading it now for the last like two days. Um, <laughs> it's, it's from the from the is it the Morrison Institute, which is this is the big green fella there at the bottom. Yeah, that's the yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it, yeah. It's affiliated with Hills Nutrition. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I got it from Lisa Hannaby. She told me to buy it, and yeah. I've just done a video on it as well. I've done a little review on it. It was really interesting stuff. Yeah. And she said there's a lot of them there with, with the working dog as well. So, yeah, I had a little look at that. I've been reading that for for about a day now, so I haven't really got too far into it. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's quite interesting stuff. You realise she was trying to kill you when she told you a to read it and b to try and lift it up. She was probably trying to kill me before that. Ah, uh, okay. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watch her. Watch her. She's um, she's a one. Uh, <laughs> and I'll get it in the neck. I will get it in the neck for that. And talking about uh, Lisa Hanneby, I think she's just on. Uh, she's she's part of a team who are putting together some um, some uh, a, a course in nutrition. Is that right? Have you, yeah. have you heard about that? Don't think so, Lisa. No. If you've got any information on that, we'd be really grateful. I th- you you are there because you put up a a post a minute ago. If you if you've got any information you can share with us here because we're talking education, um, so uh, if you can put that up, that'd be amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And so what, I, what? What I will say, Nick, yeah. just on that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Me and Caroline Griffin, we had a we had a chat just before Christmas for about an hour on the phone. Yeah, obviously got to know each other, and we went through you know, Afco and the NRC. Afco is quite new to me. I've always gone down the NRC route, so she. Um, I was open my eyes to the AFCO. Mm. Um, and I think the last, what, four months now? No, sorry, four weeks. We've been working on a book together, um, which is all to do with, um, you know, the 80 10 tens and what they're lacking yeah. uh, in certain certain complete foods. You know, you might be lacking manganese in one of them. So we've yeah. put a book together, what, what to add to those. Um, obviously, we're, we've also got uh, data on pretty much everything per 100 grams. So... You know, okay. Wow. And uh, this is book. When is that coming out? Uh, no idea yet. We're pretty much halfway through it. We're just trying to work out the maths at the moment. Um, okay. What's uh, what's it called? What, uh, we what don't we actually know yet. We we did we did um, think of something called recipes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, at the end. But that's I think that was the plan to begin with. Okay, let's just put that up so that we know what to look for. That's coming along down the line. That's brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, nothing, nothing from uh, Lisa. So, Lisa, if there's if you've got any information, do shout, and we'll put it up. Uh, if there's no information, then fair enough. We will we'll move swiftly on. Okay, so let's let's talk about. Uh, Feeding the working dog. How? Yeah, uh, dog. What are in broad strokes? Before everybody goes off and gets a gin and tonic, in broad strokes, what are the major differences that you can see, and with your experience in the field, because you've got a spaniel, Forrest, the lovely spaniel. What are the broad differences that people can get their teeth into with regard to 
the differences between feeding the po pooch in front of the fire and the working the working spaniel for example or the working lab uh, the pet the pet versus the working working dog yeah would be higher fat a lot higher fat a lot higher calories um i mean when you feed the working dog you can feed say there you can feed them six percent body weight rather than three percent you know for your pet yeah um on top of that hundred percent food you can chuck them you know 15 percent animal fats on top of that which is a lot of fat a lot of calories so that is the major difference as well yeah um when i feed a working dog mm. a lot of just feed liver and kidney you know two ten percent me i feed 15 percent i love feeding a lot of spleen just for the oxygen because the oxygen's obviously going to follow um the oxygen uh basically um sorry the iron in spleen generates oxygen which allows you to your energy system to work correctly yeah iron i love i love i tell you what i i really love um is feeding um black pudding and in the old days we could only feed black pudding from the butchers which had phosphates you know high in phosphates high in sugar in in in, uh, in in salts and things like that however nowadays uh there are there are, there are a, a few companies who are doing kind of non-salty black pudding treats which are brilliant so especially if i've got somebody who's got anemia for example that's a real cracker or mm. you know after an operation when they're just trying to re regenerate blood that's a real fantastic way to to, to do so iron you're a fan of iron big fan of iron yeah i mean look at the energy systems yeah um a working dog in the beetle line or hunting dog if you like which is obviously working for about six hours a day it's going to need a lot of iron obviously drawing the oxygen as he breathes in it's yeah. going to generate more hemoglobin in the blood and allows you taking more oxygen yeah. that way the energy system works in a working dog obviously you would take um from a kibble point of view anyway um we'll go to raw in a minute um obviously carbohydrate foods you have one say one molecule of glucose which is a six carbon molecule um, eventually that will cut it down into three into two pyruvate acids which are then uh, three three carbon molecules um and then from there with oxygen because you've you've generated you know your hemoglobin you've you've pulled in all that oxygen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you then create something called acetyl which is another um another molecule yeah um and then obviously from there it goes into what you call the crep cycle which is basically a load of enzymes that start making your energy your atp um which is you know your energy is called atp um and then obviously from those carbohydrates it will give you 36 atp so not a lot compared to fats um the trouble is when you feed carbohydrates to the working dog eventually you're going to run out of oxygen probably within the next four hours and your dog's probably got another four hours worth of work to do mm. um so what happens then is that glucose obviously goes into the pyruvate but because there's no oxygen around anymore it basically transforms into lactate acid and obviously you know three hours of running around lactate acid is going to cause you know inflammatory uh cramps also and this is why carbohydrates are no good for the working dog um again you know when we look at things like fats and things like that obviously going back to lactate acid it's not actually the lactate acid what's causes the pain or the problem mm. when you also when the lactate acid comes through the muscles it's actually the hydrogen ions in the muscles which are causing the problem which i believe nick if i was correct me if i'm wrong um it's the hydrogen ions are sort of there to control the ph proteins in they the will muscles. they will yeah because because uh, ph is a measure of the hydrogen uh, yeah 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 so that's that also keeps the proteins the the correct size yes yeah well, so obviously they're going to they're going to change the the the, the, yeah, the exactly, yeah. molecule aren't they yeah yeah very much that's, that's just causing havoc in in your dog system i mean lactate acid isn't it's, it's not a bad thing it is an energy source if it's there if it's needed but obviously you don't you don't want to be running on that for four hours that's that's just going to cause all sorts of inflammation yeah. and crap pulled muscles yeah when you get cramps you know if you're running up a hill for example the, the pain in your legs is the, the is the lactic acid building up that can't get yeah. out of your out of your legs so imagine that yeah so that's exactly just yeah. so that people can kind of uh uh feel what you're describing because if they can feel it and they go oh yeah well we've been really working the dog hard now for the last hour but the dog is still you know wagging wagging, wagging. that dog is going to be aching but because they're mm. so keen to work, they will be carrying on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, so, so, so we're saying that 
there is good biochemistry to say that fat is a very wise is is a, is a very uh, economic way economic in energy terms not money terms absolutely yeah i mean i, I give forest like yeah. a lo loads of pork before we go loads of bones spleen liver kidney yeah. vegetables um before we go usually around six percent um of, of his food and obviously then i chuck on i go to the butchers i get a massive block of fat and i chuck in 60 70 grams on top of that um but obviously if we look at fats for our main energy source what they do is they form a fatty acid chain um and then they're broken down and as they're broken down it's called the beta oxidation um and as they're sort of being broken down because there's oxygen involved is then creating what you call settle again a bit like going back to the whole carbohydrates where there's oxygen involved the primary which turns into a settle um but obviously then now this fatty acid chain is being is being oxidized it's generating that settle which then gives it a chance to go into the crep cycle and then creating your energy the difference is between fats and carbohydrates that carbohydrates will give you 36 um atp where fats will give you somewhere around 88 so double double what you would get yeah. from carbohydrates and obviously it doesn't stop there with fats as well this is something you will not ever get from carbohydrates obviously your um fats will uh um absorb your fat soluble vitamins you will not get from carbohydrates it's the same with um fats again it produces something called prostaglandin which is an anti-inflammatory mm. in the body yeah. which, Feeds into your hormones and the the, the fat soluble yeah. vitamins a d and e which are very important you don't yeah. want too much of any of them but they are absolutely essential and d yeah. for example, we're all d deficient aren't we so yeah that's really important to get your, your yeah. organ meat in for, for for your d vitamin d yeah and obviously again with your with your fats as well you you produce something called phospholipids um um, what these are is they're, they're basically amazing for the brain you look at the working dog they they are expected to have a very good memory you know for their uh, memory retrieves so it goes so far away yeah. you need to remember where it's landed so it helps out with the memory um phospholipids as well they've also been scientifically proven there's a study on this as well which i don't mind putting in the comics afterwards yeah um, it's been scientifically proven to help the learning of puppies and this all comes to animal fats. You won't get this from carbohydrates anywhere. Yeah. Um, again, with fats as well, um, obviously, when you feed carbohydrates to the working dog, like we said, eventually it's going to run up those energy. The dog's going to start panting. With fats, it's going to um, decrease that need for panting. Now, when your dog starts panting, it sort of ruins the scent and the tracking of what the dog's looking for. So by by utilizing fats, you lessen the need for the panting, and then you end up with a solid working dog for the tracking and the scent work. That is fantastic. Now that's really interesting because I've had, I've had over the years, I've had a lot of conversations with people, and they're, they're saying, uh, uh, saying my lab has improved, their scenting ability has improved since they've been on raw, and I yeah. could not explain that, but you have just explain there's that's a mechanism through the panting less panting because there's more fat less panting therefore more sniffing and better better scenting ability so that's yeah. brilliant. thank you that's brilliant really really good and the other thing when well are uh, uh is um so you're saying the fats and i completely agree are really good for uh neurological development in purpose, yeah. brilliant and for yeah. um, maintaining good brain function through your life yeah. good fats means good good brain and exactly. helps to offset alzheimer's in old age and or yeah. the equivalent but in people there's there's work in that direction as well so uh uh i always say hormones joints and pain yeah um uh, pain and uh yeah. pain problems as well for fat yeah. as well as being a very rich very dense uh energy source so that is amazing and pancreatitis um a lot of people are scared of feeding fats because of pancreatitis what are your what are your thoughts in that line have you seen it have you 
I haven't looked into it to be honest, but I think I did see a video with you and Rowan Sanderson yeah. for Pancreatus. So I think yeah. you, know, you mentioned it's, it doesn't come from animal fats. So you're not actually quite sure where it comes from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. However, Sorry. If I mean, if, if you're going to feed a working dog, you know, fats, they're running around it for eight, 10 hours a day. I'm, I'm not worried at all. Um, I mean, you could look. You can look at Forrest now, you know, he's, he's not fat at all. He's not in pain. I remember you saying before, just a little poke in the stomach, and that tells you if they got pancreatitis or not. Any pancreatitis, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with it. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're going to feed a pet, I, I wouldn't obviously feed a pet 20% 20, 20 of fat on top, you know, to go for an aff or a walk. That's, that is not really using common sense, to be honest. But, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that, that's that's really good. Jerk, very briefly, what what are so just to kind of fill in uh, my thoughts on pancreatitis it would be that if you're going to introduce fats, introduce them gradually so that the, yeah. the, the dog can get used to it. It's not uh, okay uh, a, a a moderate fat, i.e., an average raw food diet. You know, average, 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 and then all of a sudden they're getting great big lock of a uh, uh, block of lard. So we don't mm. want to do that. No, gradually coming in, and I always say to people, start at least a month before the working season to yeah. gradually bring that fat in. And yeah, you've given us the biochemistry. Thank you. Uh, the other thing I was going to say was, oh yeah, why? So if it's fats, if you think about it, kibble, all kibbles are balanced so that they don't they 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 only have just enough fat for the for whatever the dog you know if it's a working dog breed it'll maybe a bit bit higher if it's a if it's a senior kibble it'll be a bit lower in fat uh and and yet you do see a lot of pancreatitis in kibble fed dogs where the, mm. where the fat is regulated very 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 carefully and why is that and so some of the conversations i've had with connor and with with rowan and with Brendan is that from, and this is from the work of uh, Dr. Mark Roberts. Have you, if you haven't come across him, you need to chase him. Really um, fascinating guy. He's, if you look at the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society uh, conference videos, have you come across those at all? No, I haven't, no. Not. Okay, so here's a, this is a plug. This is a blatant plug for the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society. We've the last few years we've recorded on really good quality our conferences, and uh, I think it was two years ago Mark Roberts did a talk on 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 fats and energy metabolism and things. So it's a it's a great one to look at. And he was saying, if you get let's say we get twenty dogs and you feed them a high fat raw food, and you get twenty dogs and you feed them a kibble, just an average kibble you would think that the dogs that the raw fed high fat dogs would have higher blood fats triglyc triglycerides which is how yeah. you measure it the blood triglycerides than the kibble but actually the opposite is true the kibble dogs have higher blood triglycerides than the high fat raw dogs and the thinking is it's because of the insulin from the carbohydrate mm. and that is what the pancreas gets upset about this constant high level of triglycerides yeah and so that's, that's the biochemistry behind it so fascinating fascinating so when you <laughs> when you want to uh re uh re when 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 you've got through the idea that your energy metabolism and you've got your head around that have a look at look at the pancreatitis debate because it is debate because most academics most uh board certified nutritionists will say well it just kind of happens and they'll say uh when it happens you've got to feed a low fat diet and that's fair enough in the short term but mm. i do not think that fat causes pancreatitis because no. if you think of it if it was fat that caused pancreatitis every husky in alaska every working sled dog would have pancreatitis yeah, they get exactly, yeah. oodles of fat yeah keep them going don't they 
Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. Um, so um, so what fats do you use for forest and for working dogs? And when you're talking to people, what fats do you choose from? I always go to butcher and just ask for, I just usually say, have you got any off cuts of fat, beef fat? I oh, okay. Come, like a massive massive block of fat and yeah. you, you might charge you a couple of quid and we might just say chuck some money in a charity box okay so obviously yeah i always put fish in there as well i always put raw eggs in there as well um coconut oil never good one as well yeah there's all sorts of stuff you can use wow for your fats wow uh, so yeah lots of different different kinds of fats okay good it's interesting that you can get them cheap from the from the butcher yeah because you wait give it a year once people once everybody uh cottons onto that the butchers will be charging quid a kilo mm. <laughs> there's probably, probably gonna be more than that yeah because right, so. bones yeah. they used to uh chicken wings chicken carcasses they used to give them away and now now they, they don't charge much but uh you do have to you do have to pay okay so, so if, if if you had to say the the three most important things about feeding the the seriously working dog we're not saying the dog who does a mile more than the average couch potato we're talking about the serious working dog through the winter when they're really really working hard what are your three top tips for feeding them just to just to round things up a little bit there jason uh definitely fat like we've obviously discussed I, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend carbohydrates at all. Um, spleen again for your iron. Obviously, obviously, you know your fats can. Um, mm, yeah. Your fats can obviously go through um, changing the glucose, which is called uh, gluconeogenesis. Obviously, uh, the glucose comes from glucose, and you have the neo, which means new, and then genesis, which means creation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can go through there. Um, obviously, then like I said, spleen for your oxygen. Um, kelp powder, seaweed. Um, it basically supports your thyroid health, um, which obviously regulates things like metabolism. Mm. It regulates mood. It regulates temperature, muscle contractions. It does everything for the working dog, so super important. And it is one that's, I mean, iodine, obviously, you know, from kelp powder. Iodine is lacking in quite, quite a lot of diets from what I can see of. So, you know, if there's one tip I will give anyone tonight is, you know, get some, kelp powder some seaweed i think conor brady is his own does, does he not he does he does yes yeah. yes yes so yeah some of that obviously door west have got their own as well yeah. and it's really simple you was just told you on the back of the back of the yeah. old packet how much to put in per weight of dog yeah um i quite quite selective with my bones as well that i feed i mean i i love to feed feet mainly because of the skin and the and the the claws of the nails, if you like, which are still attached, it provides a hell of a lot of manganese for your ligaments and tendons. Yeah. What sort of what sort of feet? What sort of feet? Uh, duck feet mainly. Okay. Always, always duck feet. You can't feed chicken feet, but obviously my dogs are not really good on chicken, so I'm always I'm always up for uh, duck feet. Yeah. And when you look at the skin as well, it's actually the skin is actually eighty percent collagen, which is actually digest digestible collagen. Um, so yeah it's all full of connective tissue as well which is you know going to raise that manganese as well brilliant uh well so, yeah pig it, trotters. do you do you do you go down that line at all pig's trotters i have done a few times but they sort of just nibble them and sort of leave them on the bloody carpet <laughs> 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 why well, not going and taking them in the kitchen and then just sort of cut them up and you know yeah scissoring them so yeah I've, I've, I've knitted that, but, but yeah if, obviously if dogs you know if dogs like don't do what my dogs do you know you carry on carry on um i do like trachea meat as well for the glucosamine obviously a stiffness of joints yeah it prevents destructive in, uh, enzymes around the cartilage yeah uh, which is super important good for your bladder as well uh, yeah chondroitin and glucosamine yeah. to feed the mucus layer around your bladder so for bladder yeah uh, if you got recovery at least how give me a tip the other day about glucosamine as well and trachea meat it actually obviously allows a dog to rest which produces i'm not too sure of a hormone obviously if she's watched you can comment it now it will produce a hormone uh to allow your dog to rest after um working or training which is really good as well um next tip probably rattling on a bit now uh rest plenty of rest 
I mean, after after six hour day of work and just go home, just sit on the sofa with a dog. Don't do nothing. Let my dog rest. Um, Connor O'Brady put it in his book as well. So I have known about it as well about having a bowl of water, a bowl of salt water. If your dog goes towards the salt water, that means it's going to need electrolytes. So what I like to do if Forrest goes to that salt water, I've always got some watermelon in the fridge freezer which replaces a lot of electrolytes which are what a lot of athletes do human athletes do as well so watermelon, watermelon yeah replaces hey, the, wow yeah. fantastic also with salt i always use uh himalayan because it's just got yeah it's got a broader uh it's not just sodium and chloride it's got a whole lot of other things in there as well yeah yeah, yeah. That's brilliant brilliant wow uh it's amazing. That's what I mean. You put all these things together, you've got a solid base and structure for this working dog when you know yeah. he's just going to be performing to a T and you know he's not going to get injured. I do like Kel as well, you know, for the vitamin K, you know, just for, you know, if he does get injured. Um, Kale is this yeah. And uh, it just means that they, the raw fed, the, with the high fat raw fed dog, they've just got more in their tank for longer. Yeah. So you won't get mm -hmm. a morning or even half a morning. You know, the kibble dog, they're going to fade at the end of the morning and you'll be you're struggling to get a, an afternoon out of them but i yeah. my, uh, my experience is that the raw fed dog uh especially when they've got good fats going on you can you can get a day out of them no problem just as you yeah. get, you know uh if you're doing you know ultra ultra marathons you, you you get plenty of fats in you there's an amazing guy called um uh, professor tim noakes you come yeah. with tim noakes at all no Tim, sure Tim Noakes, he's written a book. It hasn't come on to uh, the uh, Audible yet that, I, that I've seen. But basically, he was uh, Professor Tim Noakes. I won't write it because I can't be bothered. But <laughs> Tim Noakes, right, he's a South African guy. And he, for for a long time, 15, 20 years, he was, he was at the forefront of you've got to eat carbs if you want to be an athlete. And then, God bless him, he saw the light and he realized that he had been wrong for 15 years 20 years or so and said i was wrong it's not about the it's not about carbs it's about high fat we yeah. you know for for any type of endurance uh athleticism and training fat is where it's at yeah mm. in a nutshell yeah. glucose is for is for the sprinters and everybody else really is 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 the fats uh, and even even sprinters have got to train and so fats are going to help them when they're training when they're doing you know lots and lots of work and being able to do six hours training a day so um he's a fascinating one and he was actually taken to court by the south african i think by i don't know the nutrition department within the within the south african uh government and he won he won his argument against them. He, he showed them all the biochemistry and everything. They were trying because he was trying to he was undermining undermining their what they were saying. And so they were losing business. And so they sued him to try and keep him quiet. But he went to court with them and he won. It's a fascinating thing. Check him out. Dr. Tim Noakes. Brilliant, brilliant. brilliant. You'll love it. You'll, you'll, you'll mind blowing stuff. Really amazing. Um, so there we go. Uh, final thoughts. Final thoughts before we go, Jason. Anything that 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 you do that you have learned? Any little uh, a little trick? Say that you, I mean you've given us about a thousand little tricks this evening. So uh, anything you want to leave an idea or a book or uh, a final thought or a, a website that you find very useful? Uh, uh, I can't think, Nick, to be honest. Um, I mean, what, what I, the website I do like at the moment yeah. is uh, it's called uh, it's called Eat This Much. Ah. And there's all sorts of nutritional data on there. It's got anything you could feed your dog. He's got liver, kidney, spleen, um, I think it's called just just eat this much something like that anyway I can't can't quite put my finger on it now, but, um, okay just I'll put, it, I'll put it in the comments afterwards okay just eat this uh, but it's, it's got all the nutritional data on there for pretty much everything 
Um, that's you find that's useful to go to fantastic that's really really good yeah. there's going to be a lot of people here who've got some knowledge and they're just thinking give me the references so that i can go and learn more and so yeah. that, that's that's worth its weight in gold just eat this much good i didn't know about those guys so i'm going to check them out as well yeah. uh i'm just seeing whether lisa i think she did come on but we were we were right into our conversation when she came back uh did you see her coming back? I did. Uh, she, she, did. Yeah, she did, did a person she's there so this is her saying we're nearly there with the book so i think keep an eye on newish uh that's that's uh lisa and she and she's for courses keep an eye on newish i'm sure she'll be able to she'll be publishing it on instagram as soon as the course comes out so help is at hand um fabulous jace cheers nick absolutely cheers, great couldn't be better yeah. i just got to say next week we've got we have got nikki de Crescentis, who is the boss at north point pets over the pond uh she i think she's uh she in pennsylvania anyway she's in north point pets you can find her on instagram on uh on at North Point Pets. She's a staunch supporter of raw food. Her, her shop is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a mecca for raw feed, raw feeding in the States. Uh, she's done interviews with the likes, likes of Ryan Yamka and some of the, the really the greats. So she's worth she's worth checking out. And she's going to be coming on. Uh, next week, and we're going to be talking about feeding raw in the states. Uh, this, what's what is the what is the the state of play in the United States, and uh, what the future looks like, how things are different, and so she's going to have, have a, a lot of lessons to teach us with that. Uh, so with that, Jace, I'm going to say thank you very much, sir. Really appreciate it. Great knowledge. Great. Well, thank you for taking us through all that we really appreciate it and uh we will see you guys all next week uh on george or on raw raw with nikki de Crescentis from north point pets until then we will see you very soon thank you thank you jace cheers mate